Welcome everyone to uh, the very first podcast of this Facebook group. Uh, I really wish to welcome new guests every week to talk about interesting subjects. Uh, to give you a little bit of context, uh, I've recently read an article from uh, Patrick Guerin, which is uh, who is the guest of today. Thank you so much for being here, by the way. Yeah. And you talked about like investors trying to get into esports with the new Overwatch uh, League. Uh, Etc. And I thought I was going to invite you to discuss about esports and Overwatch as a whole. So, uh, could you maybe start by introducing yourself? Like, uh, what do you do? And and yeah, let's start from here. Uh, yeah, my name is Patrick. Uh, like you said, I'm a contributor for the Esports Observer currently. Uh, just big fan of esports in general. Uh, been writing about it for a couple years now. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So just so you know, guys, on the live, uh, Patrick Gant doesn't have like a webcam for now, so this is just a static. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, maybe if you come back on the podcast, uh, you'll have a camera. Yeah. So, uh, yeah hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. So basically, I wanted to talk to you about how. Um, so I saw your article, and I was like, "This is fascinating." How people are trying to invest in esports, and everyone is talking about it. Like even people that work into investments or like VCs are talking about esports and I was very surprised about the buying prices of Blizzard as uh, as like what they're trying to sell for like Overwatch League and everything and my, my general opinion was that it was like way too much but I was interested in, in knowing what uh, what is Blizzard trying to sell so maybe you know better the the Overwatch scene overall in esports can you maybe tell us like what's going on in Overwatch and like how is this possible that they're asking like that much money? Uh, so yeah, maybe you can clear us on, on that. Um, well, from what I understand, and uh, uh, full disclosure, I, I the only information I know more than you is just what I've what I've researched personally. But uh, the past couple of weeks, if anyone has been paying attention, you've had a lot of endemic brands kind of evacuating the Overwatch scene. Uh, Dignitas. Ninjas in Pajamas, Splice, uh, Fnatic, these like long-time tenured esports brands, uh, and all of them have kind of said the same thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Blizzard doesn't want to cater to us. And it, it seems like Blizzard is wanting to cater towards the venture capitalists the, or the, the sports moguls, it seems. And uh, I'm not, not really sure what, what, their, what their plan is, honestly. I, I'm just as confused as anyone uh, because it just seems like they're asking for way too much money outside of anyone but those venture capitalists. Like so far you've got in, in the North American scene, the four teams that have signed on are NRG and Immortals, which are currently, I guess, in quotes, endemic brands, but they are they were started by venture capitalists or, or sports moguls. Like NRG is the, the LA Kings franchise, I believe, and then you have Rick Fox involved in Echo Fox and stuff like that. And you've, you've got people... Like these venture capitalists joining, and those are the people that they seem to be attracting. And then from the other side, you've got uh, the New York Mets owner and the New England Patriots owner, and it just and those are the only people that are going to be able to get in at 20, it, It's 20 million is what they're asking, yeah. and and the the Asian teams haven't been revealed yet or what they're paying. But if they're paying anything similar to that, uh, you got to wonder who's actually buying in over there because. That's that's an incredible amount of money for when you get down to it, an esport that doesn't have the viewership that any of the other big esports have. You know yeah. that if, even they, there, there's no major tournaments that North America cares about. You've had the Overwatch contender stuff lately, but that's almost done more harm than good because almost as every single team loses in contenders, they release their Overwatch squad. It seems like it's almost a one for one scenario. So yeah, so what was very interesting is that like 20 million is a big number and you said it, but it's not only that, it's it's as well like I think there's no ref share until like 2021, which is like yeah. for me it's like I don't even know what we don't even know what League of Legends is going to be in 2021. We don't even know what Counter-Strike is going to be in 2021. I feel like in esport it's so hard to think very long term and I mean it cannot be I feel like 2021 can be long term for esport as I mean 2021 is what? It's like three years away, three years and a half. Like, 
three year, three years and three years and a half ago, esports was not what it was today, and it was not predictable. Yeah, precisely. You look at even where League of Legends was three years ago, three and a half yeah. years ago. Dota, Dota was having like its second international three years ago, and, and granted, it was doing big things, but that was still at the the early stages of of what's what's been growing. So you have, you have no idea what what could possibly be in the future, or or what games could exist. You've got Games like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, yeah, just like coming out of say, nowhere, yeah. and out of just nowhere. like t yeah, and t TSM's already bought into PUBG. So you've got what is essentially a volatile market because uh, uh, compared to traditional sports, like traditional sports doesn't have to worry about the game changing. They don't have to worry about everyone that plays baseball having to play baseball two ten years from now, you know. Yeah, exactly. But that happens in esports, so it's it's an entirely unique scenario that no one is really able to predict predict well at this point. So what yeah. was interesting to me is that I feel like Blizzard is... Like, Blizzard keeps saying how much copies of Overwatch they actually sold, which is very impressive as well. I mean, I think it's it's like 30 million in like in a matter of like a six months or a year. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about those numbers, but they sold like... Overwatch is a successful game, like in con in oh, console and absolutely. PC. Absolutely, yeah. There's people are no loving question. it, right? But I feel like the esport aspect of the game is what really is causing problem, and I think like investors are are like, oh, the game is successful, so the esport has to be successful, right? But I feel like Overwatch is the type of game that is not super fun to watch. Uh, I mean, a lot of streamers that brought success to the game on Twitch completely stopped because, well, the, the value and the entertainment from the game wasn't really there. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. And the fact that, well, you play Overwatch, you can understand Overwatch, but my mom can't understand Overwatch. My, my little brother that doesn't play cannot understand Overwatch. And that aspect means that they're already like closing themselves to the community they already have. And I think it can be bad. One of the one of the things that League of Legends uh, co-founders uh, said is that they're trying to make the game as simple as okay, so this guy can understand, but also his mom can understand. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And just for like the growth and thinking a little bit longer term. So the the thing I also wanted to point out is that uh, I I don't know who is investing in Overwatch League. But the thing is that I don't know how they're going to base, like, where is this number coming from? Like, where is this $20 million coming from? Today, like you say in the article, in an LCS spot, you have to count maybe like $2 million. But we also have like a franchising uh, plan for Riot Games on the NLCS where a permanent spot will cost you $10 million. So it's half of what Overwolf is ask Overwatch is asking, sorry. Yeah, it, like, at, where at is the same time, coming from? at the same time, that 10 million is like that's for a more a way more established game. Exactly. And, and going back on what you're saying, like the game is is not the greatest spectator game, and they need to do something with the spectator client specifically. I think if this game is ever going to actually take off. Yeah. But, but yeah, back to your point. Um, I have no idea where this 20 million dollar number is coming from. It that's an exorbitant amount, and it it almost. As much as I, I feel like a lot of these teams that are just are complaining about how Blizzard is treating them are kind of just saying, like, hey, they want too much money, essentially. But it does feel like it's, they're specifically saying, like, hey, we don't want these brands in here that have been a part of esports growth from the beginning because they, don't, they just won't have enough money. Like, yeah. I'm not sure I understand specifically why they want so much money other than to attract venture capitalists and the people that they're already attracting. It's weird. Honestly, like, it's it's really weird, and I don't understand why... Like, why do they have to go so fast? Like, why, why that fast that soon? I mean, it took so many years for other games to just build a... Like, right, right games, after, like, seven seasons of LCS, they're, like, considering doing franchising, and they're doing it with one, one only scene, like, the NLCS. And that actually uh, seems like it's almost because they've gotten so much flack for not offering it yet. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're testing it based on that alone. But they're being, they're being smarter about it. I feel like investors that are throwing money at blizzards right now are not, like, they're not thinking. They're just, like... They're like, okay, here's 20 million, and like, like that's it. I feel like Blizzard knows what he's doing. The game is sold, and like everyone is playing it. That's fun. But something that is very valuable, and 
I'm sure you use it, is that the eSport Observer has a database. Uh, yeah, yeah. That tells you a little bit what's going on. A but, fantastic I mean, you don't, database. You, yes. Yeah, fantastic database. But, like, you don't even need that. You just go on Twitch, like, you just go on Twitch at peak hours. And honestly, like, you don't see Overwatch doing so well. And, like, big streamers are playing, like, uh, Plays Unknown, League of Legends, and, like, Counter-Strike, Hearthstone. Like, those are, like, the top four or five games. Uh... One thing that is bothering me is that, like, I don't see, like, I, I want to know what the investors have, like, and what is the intent here to put that much money on a game like that, where they could literally, like, build a great organization and be present in, like, multiple games. Uh, I, I want to go back to a little bit of the past of Overwatch, um, because, I mean, the game has been here for for a few uh, a few years. We they did an, an event, right, like an international event that was won by Korea where players were representing uh, countries and not teams, and I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. And then they started to do some, like, uh, like local tournaments, stream, there used to be, like, some sort of league going on, but that didn't do a lot of success, right? Like, this was not huge, right? I mean, I, I, so far, there have been no very, like, successful Western tournaments, and the only... Okay successful Eastern tournament that I've seen is Apex, right? And that's on at 3 in the morning Eastern time, so it's not really a feasible schedule for, for people in the West to watch, right? That's very... I don't know. It's... I don't know. It's really... Uh, for me, it's like... I, I understand, like... Like, there's two things. Like, I wonder how Blizzard is selling it, and I wonder why investors are investing that much money on it. Um, I mean, it, it, it it's, it's a good question, because if you look... Historically, it almost feels like the people that are investing in, I mean, obviously outside of like NRG and Immortals who, who have a foothold somewhere in esports, uh, these people that are investing are, are, again, like you said, just seeing the Blizzard name and how popular Overwatch is without actually mm -hmm. looking back and, and studying Blizzard's past. I mean, outside of Brood War, which was the de facto esport in anywhere but Europe due to Counter-Strike there, but for, a long, for the longest time... They had StarCraft 2, which just had two or three years of being the only eSport that existed. Like they, they had the entire world under their control because it's the only thing that existed. Yeah. And then they kind of... They, they really honestly squandered that. They made a lot of poor decisions with StarCraft's development uh, that they refused to backpedal on. And they just kind of assumed that they had a spot in, in eSports, regardless of what came up behind them. And obviously that's not, not the case. If, if you look, StarCraft is probably one of the least viewed competitive esports on Twitch regularly. Yeah, and, it's very old. Like, I mean, it has yeah, a story, yeah. To be fair, it is. And, and there's a good chance that StarCraft Remastered comes and, and does something for them in an esports uh, area. It's already pretty huge in Korea again. It, it looks like Korea is fully back on the Brood War train. Really? Wow. Uh, yeah, all of all of the former Korean pros that were playing StarCraft 2 came out of retirement after retiring from StarCraft 2 to play Brood War again. That's um, crazy! Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Brood War. They, there's a tournament series going on right now called ASL. That's uh, going to be in its fourth season soon. It's been going on since 2016. It, it's crazy. Yeah, you and gotta check it out. Wow. And shockingly, that meta still continues to evolve. So, uh, Brood War's a great game, but that's a different discussion. Yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is. Star like Blizzard has been on top of the esports world, whether on purpose or on accident, for a good percentage of the time that esports have been a thing, and they have squandered it. They've either moved moved from Brood War without you know, updating that, in the, or kept bad decisions with StarCraft Two, and it, it it doesn't really bode well for the future of Overwatch. Like they've made bad decisions. Like, I, I feel like demonstrably bad decisions. Yeah, yeah. Like honestly, I agree. I, I used to work at the studio. Uh, uh, I'm from France, and I used to work mm -hmm. in the studio that is uh, responsible for like the Nation Wars. I don't know if you heard of it for StarCraft uh, Two. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nation War, uh, Nation Wars, and it, they used to invite like players, and they used to represent their countries and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I used to talk to the people in charge that that used to be like Shotcaster for uh, StarCraft Two. And they told me that, like, I mean, Blizzard was not very invested in eSport, and they actually, like, got n not that much help to organize such a big event from the actual company. And that, for me, was, like, fascinating, because now they're they're going full force on eSport, asking for so much money. 
And like, if you look at Blizzard as a company, they have so many games. Like, of I think their most successful one right now in esports is uh, Hearthstone, right? They have uh, they have tournaments all over the like all over and, the year. They have, but like, even Hearthstone TV. seems to be doing seems to be doing kind of poorly. It's like yeah. to the point where people like a lot of pros have been quitting lately, citing that the game is just not as skill intensive as it as it was back you know, a year or two years ago. Because I think it's how Blizzard is selling it. Like I mean, like if t- I stopped playing Hearthstone like maybe three years ago or two years ago, if I go back, I will have to spend so much money to get back into it. There's so much new cards. And, like I don't really know what's going on anymore. Whereas like if I stop League of Legends for two years, or even I stop like Counter Strike, I go back into it. It's like generally the same thing. Uh, I think that can as well. And as well, like Hearthstone is a card game, so it can be like redundant and like. You can just go over everything like very quickly. Like there's no, I feel like a new sport needs to build hype around it, and and I think that Heroes of the Storm, for example, could have been a game like that. But this was just like Blizzard launching a MOBA where League of Legends was like killing everyone. So that was yeah, like, they, that was just like a stupid decision. Heroes of the Storm was a bad decision entirely. Um, mm. However, I, I do actually kind of disagree with the Hearthstone point. I don't think that's actually the reason why it's floundering. Because most of the pros that play Hearthstone are aware of the model, right? Like, you have other games that follow that model. Like, you have Magic the Gathering, which, while not a great spectator type of esport, is still incredibly competitive and, and, and fairly popular, despite the fact that streaming people playing with cardboard is not easy, an easy task. There's glare problems. There, there's problems that you don't get with traditional or with traditional esports i guess like where you can stream the the content because you actually have to have a camera pointed on these people playing the cards and there is you know magic online and all but that's that program is terrible so no one really wants to use it for anything important Uh um and and that's just like the the card game model in general right you're gonna if you quit for two years in any card game whether it's magic or Oh or pokemon like to play the most recent stuff, which typically you can only play the most recent stuff in, in typical card games, you're going to have to reinvest, right? Yeah, no, I, get the, that. I get that. The the benefit of Hearthstone is that it's actually the cheapest of all of them, and you can recycle your own cards. Whereas in like Magic, if you have old cards that are worth nothing, it's like you have to start over. Whereas no, no matter what, the secondary market of Hearthstone never changes. Everything is worth what it's worth, no matter what. Um, I think the issue with Hearthstone is... Uh, as people have have said before, it, it's more. It, people are calling it curve stone now, right? Like they're not even. It, it, it's more about who draws the proper order of cards than it was about skill, because they've systemically removed these these, these skill intensive decks. Like they will never do something like Grim Patron again. You know, they really don't like Freeze Mage, as it turns out. Uh, all of these these hyper skill intensive decks, like Hand Lock and, and Reno Lock, for a while. They seem to not want that to be the type of deck that people play. They want a aggro slash mid range heavy like board type of game. Mm-hmm. And while that's more fun for the casual player, it it is less fun for the upper levels of competitive play. So that's funny because I feel like so like Blizzard is like okay, it's like they're literally like focusing on the ninety nine percent of the players, I feel. But in parallel, they're trying to do things for like the one percent of pros that are trying to make an esport out of the game. Mm-hmm. So, like in, in one part, like they're trying to sell cards and everything, satisfy like the needs of like ninety nine percent of the players of Hearthstone. But on the other hand, they're trying so hard to make an infrastructure of the one percent of best players of Overwatch, Overwatch. And for me, it's like it's fascinating. I feel like there's like a lack of consistency in like in in their in their decision making and on their business model. I get that they're two different games and they're probably managed by two very different teams. But I don't know, for me it's like it's so weird to see that what they're doing to Hearthstone like what doesn't tell me that what happened with Hearthstone is gonna happen with Overwatch. And and exactly that's that's the thr- that's the fear. Like I think I, I put in that article that um even Kespa is pulling out of Overwatch. They're not they're not heavily investing into Overwatch as an esport until they are 100% sure that Blizzard isn't going to screw it up. They they have zero confidence in Blizzard and in for good reason 
Like no. you, you brought up Heroes of the Storm, and it's like I almost forgot about that game existing because of how irrelevant it has been since day one. Exactly. You know, it, it has never been a contender, and it never will be a contender. It is a casual game through and through. And granted, it, it has some fun moments, but it just doesn't. It's not conducive to a competitive element. The skill ceiling is just not there. It's funny, man. I wish I could be like at the desk of someone that is trying to put 20 million in that and just be like just talking to him and be yo you're going to do a huge mistake. I think like like what what would you what would you say to like what do you think Blizzard should do right now with Overwatch? Um see that that's really tricky. Uh I feel like there's people probably sitting around a table having that this conversation right now maybe yeah. even, you know, like that work for Blizzard. And I, personally, I think if you take out the level of near impossibility that this suggestion has, I think the first thing you have to do is fix the spectator client. If you want, if you want viewership to, to rise, the spectator client has to just be better. It, you know, Counter-Strike spectator has a, a lot of things over Overwatch, um, but also Counter-Strike is a more fluid game. Mm-hmm. Overwatch is super twitchy. Overwatch is very reminiscent of that, that mid-90s Unreal Tournament, like Quake-style You know, everyone's constantly moving. Everyone is is trying to flank or do stuff. Whereas in Counter Strike, there's a lot more strategy involved that isn't as fast paced. You know, you've got also less people as well and it's a lot less. Of college as well. Like I feel like Overwatch has so much like projectiles, like just oh yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's like, a it's a very Blizzard it's game. It's it's the World of Warcraft of shooters. There's no question about it. Uh-huh, like, yeah. um, and and then Counter Strike, you know, it, there's a lot less ridiculous things going on in Counter Strike as well. You don't have All, like you said, the projectiles and all of these ridiculous colors going out. You don't have ultimates charging up, you know? And granted, I think what they did with Overwatch was genius. It, everything about that game is a great game. It's just they have to put a lot of effort in to make this competitive scene work. And you're right, they are rushing it. And it, it, it it's worrisome because of that, where, you know, maybe they're they're trying to do too much too fast and it's going to burn them when... I mean, what, if, what happens if four or five years down the road they actually do figure out the spectator client issue and they're just like, okay, yeah, let's... We have a great spectator client now. This game is watchable. But they already had all these investors that got burned because the game didn't take off so quick. And you know, what, what do you do there? You, you've burned bridges at that point. You yeah. don't, you're not going to have those investors that saw negative returns on their investment. What's, what's, what's cool about this is that... Uh... Honestly, I think that Blizzard who sh- should have, I mean, right now the the deal is like public and people are maybe thinking of like considering $20 million dollars on, on the table. But I don't know, I thought that maybe Blizzard would like copy the Riot Games model, which is like starting very slow, letting people play the game a little more because obviously the game, I feel like the game hasn't been out enough for people to actually be like insanely good at the game. But I think uh, uh, I think when you look at it that way though, you have to consider that even when League of Legends was coming out, esports was a different world entirely. The, yeah. like, esports has, has evolved in so rapid of a way that you have to change your thinking. And I think that's that's Blizzard's ideology there, is that you know when League of Legends was coming out, esports as a thing wasn't huge. You know, you you they were working on StarCraft too at the time and it was even not huge, but it was getting there. And then League of Legends just kind of organically grew as Twitch and streaming grew. Um, but yeah, you, I, it, it's reasonable to expect them to, to take a different stance and a different like trajectory when esports has matured in the way that it has before Overwatch came out. But it still, it just, it just feels like it's too quick. It feels like they, the infrastructure is not there. It feels like the what they're trying to do with the game is just not going to work as a spectator competitive game. Yeah, so the thing is that, yeah, that, that's literally what I'm scared of. Like, let's say they get 20 millions from ha- however many, like, they need. And and there's just, like, there's just no hype around the event. And, like, they end up doing, like, 10,000 viewers and everyone everything goes to shit because, well, there's nobody watching. There's no ad revenue. There's no hype. And also, I feel like one, of, one, problem, one problem that brings from, like, that is brought by just going too fast is... 
literally like the fact that nobody got to be a fan of like a team or or like a specific player or a specific gameplay. Uh, I personally didn't get the chance to getting to know like the teams like oh who are the French player in Overwatch who is like super good at Genji or who is super good at this guy. And I feel like Blizzard doesn't give me time for this or like doesn't give me time to root for a team. And the first day of the Overwatch League, I'm just going to be like, I don't even know what's going on, to be honest. Like, it's probably going to be, like, high production level content. Uh, I also heard that they were working on the spectator mode. I know you, you mentioned it. Uh, but I just feel like nobody's going to show up. And I'm so scared for, for that to happen because, I mean, obviously I don't want them to fail. Uh, I think that Blizzard is doing well for eSport, but I just think that there's no hype around Overwatch League. So I just wonder how Blizzard is going to work uh, work on that and like how they're going to build I, up to this hype I definitely think their their goal is bringing that kind of like regional support that traditional sports have that's why with this Overwatch League the, the like uh, Robert Kraft is he's got the Boston team like whatever team ends up, he ends up like or I don't know how the specifics work, but yeah. he's going to control the team that runs out of Boston, you know. Like, and then the Mets, the New York team is is going to the owner of the Mets, uh, Fred Wilpon, I think his name is. And then NRG and Immortals are controlling San Francisco and Los Angeles teams, so that they want that like regional thing because that's actually an issue overall in esports, right? Like players, like it's such a unique environment for player trades and, and whatnot. It, you've got very few players that have played out their entire career on a team, right? You've got like Bjergsen on TSM in League of Legends. He's been there for so long now that he he embodies that that team and Sneaky kind of embodies Cloud9 and, and to kind of continue the, the League of Legends references. But of course, of course. It, there aren't a lot of teams in, 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 in Overwatch that have really like established themselves. Like, you, you had NRG with Seagull in them for a little while, but I don't think that they still... Like I don't think Seagull and his team play from uh, play for NRG anymore. Uh, I'm not entirely sure the specifics on that, to be honest. I couldn't tell you. Sorry. Yeah, but I think Blizzard understands that there's that inherent issue of how do you have support for a team? I mean, you know, you have these brands like Fanatic and TSM and Cloud9 uh, and the Ninjas in Pajamas and Astralis. These teams that are like have been around a while and are consistently successful that have fans but outside of that like what gives any like why would anyone root for mysterious monkeys in the eu lcs like what who who has any sort of reason to root for that team other than like oh hey i like the the, one of these players and it's almost like the the nba effect where you know people care more about the player than the team but at least the nba has regions involved you've still got regional teams and i think that's what blizzard is shooting for here with this, like, okay, well, if you turn on Overwatch League and you're like, who do I root for? Oh, I'll root for the team that is from New York because I live in the northeast of the U.S. Or I'll root for the team that's in Los Angeles because that's I live in California or whatever. Yeah. I think that, that's that's their end so goal So I, I live in San Francisco. I need to be an RG fan. So that's, that's uh, what it is. Yes, I believe that that's how that works. You have to you have to root for NRG. To, okay, no choice. It's uh, required by law, actually. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I honestly get, like, the whole... Um, associating like a team with like a, a city I think that, I mean it works very well like when I moved here I got introduced to the like uh, the Warriors for basketball and mm-hmm. like the Giants for baseball and uh, baseball and everything I, I get how it works but this didn't get built in like a month or two like this is like years and years of like culture and like mm-hmm. heritage and stuff uh, right now like you tell me okay like NRG is San Francisco I'm t- like I'm gonna tell you like what are you even saying? Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, like they, what? what is it? Like, they own the SF area and the Los Angeles area. Like, you know how it's, like, weird to say, right? It's, like, I don't know. It's just, for me, It, I get what Blizzard is trying to do, but I feel like this could be done if, A, Overwatch was around for so many years that they have, like, a well-established fan base in that... Some players are very charismatic and they have their own fan base and like they have their own story and their own like their own highlights and like their own like their own like just story like and and like trophies and all, like the whole like game. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I feel like there's no story behind Overwatch. Like there's just it, nothing. 
it's very telling that the top Overwatch streamers are not professional players. That is, that's not the case in any other esport, right? The top streamers, uh, with I guess the exception of like, one or two Counter Strike streamers, I guess, but traditionally the top streamers have always been professional players or or retired professional players, right? Yeah, yeah. And, okay, and you've got like uh, I'm a cutie pie, Bjerks and Sneaky. They're all always incredibly high viewers. And then I know uh, like Admiral Bulldog is one of the most popular Dota streamers. But you got like Moon Moon is what this he's, he's got to be the most popular Overwatch streamer, right? Is there someone else like Seagull? I guess. But I'm gonna check right now. Actually, we'll see. Uh, we'll see who's on top. Um... Let me see. I don't think either of them are currently live. So, Overwatch, first of all, right now has... Uh, the first game is The Legend of Zelda, for some reason. Uh, that's because of Summer Games Done Quick. The uh, chari- okay, okay. Charity Speedrunning Marathon. Right, Worth yeah. it. I currently have that on, on my other monitor. So, right now... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, right now... So, there's an, like, there's an esports game for Overwolf. It's Envision Esports uh, versus uh, FNR GFE. Yeah, it, it, and this is, it looks like this is just some like minor like beat tournament. international beat, seven yeah. seven thousand viewers, and then you have someone called I am but Calvin uh, with five thousand viewers, which is like the guy is alone and he's making like a, a, almost as much viewer as like a production level uh, esport event. I don't know, like I, like what is what is gonna like, I don't know. I really I think it's gonna be an awkward launch to be honest. Yeah, that uh, for sure. Blizzard thinks that they're like this big deal companies and stuff, but at the end of the day, like if nobody like if nobody gives a shit about your game, like not no one's gonna show up. Like I feel like they're gonna do all like Twitch Prime promotions, maybe like they they're gonna like market the hell out of it just to make sure the investors are happy because now they not only have to satisfy us as viewers, as analysts, as content creators, as journalists or whatever. But they have to satisfy a real a lot a lot of investors that put a lot of money on the line, uh, and I think this is going to be scary. I honestly think this is going to be very very bad for Blizzard uh, as a company, as like a stock. Uh, I don't know. I I just I just don't I just don't understand the the logic behind it. And I feel like like we could keep talking about this, but honestly, for me, it just doesn't make any sense. And when I read the article, I was like. Wait, did I miss something? Like, is Overwatch becoming a popular game now? And I'm like, no, 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 like nothing is going on there. Yeah, it's, like... it's actually the opposite. It, the viewership for for competitive tournaments has continued to to waver. It's not been great, and it never was great. Um, and it, like you said, you have a lot of streamers leaving. Uh, to to go back a little bit, Moon Moon has four million total views more than Seagull. So yeah, the the most popular Overwatch streamer is a guy who doesn't even play on a professional team. He's just an entertainment, like he's a personality. When granted, Moon Moon's hilarious. Uh, I'm tangentially like some of my friends went to high school with that guy. Like he's he's a cool guy. Like, uh, but he's not a professional player, and he's even said he'll not be pro. And I don't know if he said that on stream, but he said before that he doesn't want to go pro because that's it's less money for more work. Than what he's doing, and he he does like the the sub. He kind of has like that trick two G sub wars kind of thing where he does like sub tournaments and stuff. So he he's got his own little like niche community. But again, it, it's it's almost entirely separate from the competitive Overwatch community, where it, mm-hmm. uh, he's not even a professional player, and his he hosts amateur tournaments that are all sub only or subscriber only. So yeah, it, the the competitive scene of Overwatch is not thriving yeah the game itself is obviously enormous because it's it's a great casual game like it yeah. it's a great competitive game for sure like playing it at a competitive level i'm sure is, is incredibly fun i don't really play the game too much so i can't i'm not something great I, i'm not great at shooters but something that is interesting i feel like i just had the thought is that i mean blizzard is such a well-established company maybe they can't really start small like, you see how, like, Red Games, when they founded League of Legends and they started with LCS Season 1, like, seven years ago, they were a startup. Like, League of Legends were their first game, so they really had nothing to lose, or, like, they were just building the brand and everything, right? Well, But I feel like when you're Blizzard, like, you have to go big very fast, right? Like, isn't it, like, an aspect like that that maybe we're missing? Uh, I mean, that, that's a fair point. Um, I think like, Riot... They don't have the startup aspect anymore. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. It, it, they definitely have to 
kind of go big, but at the same time, like, there's no, is there a downside to not, like, forming up a league and stuff this early? Because even even Riot, and again, you have to point out that the esports landscape was entirely different back then. But even Riot was three or four years into the game before they had any sort of competitive. Like, mm-hmm. like LCS yeah. started in season three. Like, they had a world championship in season two. Um, but that was just like a, they invited people that had won tournaments and stuff. They they didn't have like an actual LCS thing. That started up in season three, and I feel like that was in response to how esports was growing, and less as a we need to profit on this esports thing. And, and honestly, I think that a lot of that is the difference between successful games and games that aren't successful. It feels like where the games that are at the top are games that never were really made to profit off of the esports thing, right? Yeah. Like Counter-Strike was made in 1995. Uh, League of Legends yeah. uh, didn't get popular enough. Or, well, League of Legends was popular before esports was popular as, as a, a, a very big thing. And, yeah, it just seems like they're, they're with Overwatch, they're like, this is an esport first. Like, we're going to market this as an esport. It's going to be a competitive game. Like, it has the cool casual aspect, and it's a fun game to play at any level, but it seems like from day one, almost, it has been, like, this is an eSport. And that hasn't really worked for a lot of games in the past, right? Like, you had Evolve was marketed purely as an eSport, and that game flopped almost as hard as uh, whatever that game was that came out on the same day as Overwatch, or came out right at the same time as Overwatch, and now has, like, 50 people playing. Battle, Battleborn? I don't. I don't even know. I don't think I heard of it. To be honest, it was. Uh, it was done by Gearbox. Okay, I'm launching a, a yeah. game the the same day as Blizzard is. It wasn't. It wasn't launched the same day, but it was launched around the same time. And Battleborn was actually the same type of like style as Overwatch. Uh, it's like that first person MOBA type thing. It just didn't stand a chance. I mean, it's it's in, honestly it's a it's a great conversation. I'm really glad we did this. Uh, I feel like. I don't know, I feel we'll just have to wait and see, but I, I really wish we could talk to someone from Blizzard just to know a little bit what are, like, what are the motives, why are the numbers so high, but I, I really I really want to insist on this point of, like, Blizzard isn't a startup, and I feel like if they fail at something that that they start small, well, it, they will probably, like, look bad or something. Maybe, like, Blizzard is just good at making games, right? Like, Oh, I mean... So, no, there's no question sports. there. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, <laughs> I've, no, no, I've been playing Blizzard games that. since I was 12 years old. No, no, they're they're, course, they're incredible. No, no, I'm <laughs> saying I'm, maybe they're just good at making games. And like, yeah, absolutely. It's not for them. Like, it, maybe they're not good enough to make esports. Do I don't know if it's like a team? good enough thing, but it's definitely like there's definitely an issue. Like somewhere along the line, they're making bad decisions with regards to esports stuff. Like whoever greenlit Heroes of the Storm probably shouldn't be the person like it, be a person that is tangentially in charge of your esports stuff like i don't know how much of who decided heroes of the storm should be a game when it should have been a game versus like how much they have like weight they have in decisions on esports yeah. but like you've clearly made some bad decisions some very obviously bad decisions and like i, I definitely agree with you this does this continues to seem like a bad decision with this overwatch league stuff Man, I wish we could talk to someone from Blizzard or from the old <laughs> team. It, I don't know. It's such an interesting topic, and I'm I'm very uh, skeptical about the um, skeptical about the the launch of Overwatch League, which which is a cool project, like as as a whole. But it could have been smaller, and it sh- it should have been smaller. Like honestly, numbers are insane. Um, I mean, I think I think we're done here, man. Like, is there anything you want to add, or is there any points you want to cover? Or no, I think uh, I think we've pretty much yeah, talked about everything all right, all right. Uh, relevant to the to the topic. Okay, okay. We'll talk about more Brood War if you want. I'll always talk about Brood War. Uh, maybe for next episode. Like, <laughs> I'm down. I haven't. I played uh, StarCraft Two. Brood War was like. I don't think I was even born when it came out. Uh, uh man. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. Like honestly, uh, I really, uh, I really like your your content on the esports observer. So, like, feel free. I appreciate to, it. Feel, feel free to share your content on the Facebook group. Uh, like, I'm very trying. I'm trying to gather some people that that have the same interest. And if you want to talk in a podcast or do a Facebook live on the group, like, feel free. Uh, feel free to do so. Honestly, uh, 
I will keep uh, seeing what you guys do at the Esport Observer. Uh, is there anywhere people can follow you? I, I posted your uh, Esport Observer link and your Twitter. Is there anywhere anywhere else you want people to follow you? No, that's pretty much it. Uh, I have a Facebook, but it's not. It's like a personal thing, so. Okay. okay. Really, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. Honestly, uh, appreciate I appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I had fun. Thank you so much for tuning into the live, guys. We'll see you for the next one. Cheers.